Hello guys, now let's start a series of lectures in which we will be discussing about hormones, their receptors and their secondary messengers. Now in this video, let's start with the hormones and their classification. What are the important different types of hormones which you need to know for your exams? Let's start guys. Har Moons now what are hormones? Hormones are the chemical substances which are produced from glands from different sites in the body. They will come and act on the cells, okay, on their receptors and will brought out the necessary changes, whatever are required. Now hormones are mainly classified into four types. There are four ty types or four classes of hormones are there. Now the first class of hormones are called as single amino acid derivatives what does i mean by in the name itself it's there the hormone is derived out of a single amino acid which means the hormone is manufactured out of one single amino acid okay single amino acid derivative now what are the examples see let's take out uh, amino acid which is called as tyrosine okay tyrosine is an amino acid now from this tyrosine thyroid hormones Thyroid hormones like T3 and T4 are produced, triadothyronine and thyroxine are produced. So, thyroid hormones are single amino acid derived hormones. The same way, catecholamines. Just try to remember what are the examples of catecholamines, the hormones with the catechol rings. Now, the catecholamines, including epinephrine or adrenaline nor epinephrine and dopamine okay so epinephrine nor epinephrine and dopamine these catecholamines are also examples of single amino acid derived hormones so if someone comes to you and ask you Dopamine is derived out of which amino acid? It's a tyrosine. Okay, it's a tyrosine amino acid derivative. Just like that, there is one more amino acid called as tryptophan. Okay, now from the tryptophan, serotonin. Okay, is produced. Just like that, there is one more amino acid called as Rg9 from which nitric oxide is produced. Guys, could you able to remember what is the important effect of nitric oxide? Nitric oxide causes vasodilation. Okay, so nitric oxide is derived from Rg9. Serotonin is derived from tryptophan. Tyrosine is giving rise to thyroid hormones as well as catecholamine. So, first group of hormones are completed and the first class is completed that the single derived, okay, single amino acid derived hormones are completed. Now, let's talk about the second class. The second class is protein hormones. Okay, hormones which are made out of protein or we can say hormones which are made out of multiple amino acids. Protein is nothing but multiple amino acids right so what are the examples which you need to know the first hormone is insulin which is made out of 51 amino acids which are having alpha and beta chains the insulin which will decrease the blood glucose levels we have already discussed this but anyway insulin is an example of protein hormone or you can also say it's an example of peptide hormone okay why it is called as a peptide hormone why because of multiple amino acids now, one more important hormone is parathyromone or parathyroid hormone which is made out of 84 amino acids is an example of protein hormone. Important point which I want you to know for your exam is, see these proteins are bigger structures, right? These are not a small single structure, is these are bigger structures. So, these protein hormones cannot cross the cell membrane ok 
कि प्रोटीन डिराइव्ड हार्मोन्स के नॉट क्रॉस द सेल मेम्ब्रेन वाई बिकॉज दिस आर द बिगेस्ट स्ट्रक्चर्स दे के नॉट क्रॉस द लिपिड बैरियर द लिपिड मेम्ब्रेन्स सो दे एक्ट ऑन यूजेस्टल वी सो दे एक्ट ऑन इंट्रासेलर रिसेप्टर्स और ऑन द एक्स्ट्रा सेलर रिसेप्टर्स सो दीज प्रोटीन हार्मोन्स आर गोइंग टू एक्ट ऑन इंट्रासेलर रिसेप्टर्स और cell surface receptors they cannot enter into the cell right so these hormones can only act on the cell surface receptors okay cell surface receptors okay this is a very important point which you need to know protein hormones can never cross the cell membranes now after discussing about the protein derived hormones now let's discuss about the third class of hormones which are called as cholesterol derivatives third class is colles cholesterol derivatives in the name itself it is very clear cholesterol derivative means the hormone which is derived from cholesterol okay so these hormones are also called as steroid hormones with the steroid ring steroid hormones now what are the examples so steroid hormones examples are sex steroids what are the examples of sex steroid guys testosterone okay estrogen progesterone okay testosterone estrogen progesterone these are the sex steroids guys could you able to remember any other steroid hormones see aldosterone 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 is an example of minerallo corticoid minerallo corticoid which is coming from the zona glomerulosa of adrenal gland cortisol example of gluco corti coid so all these things whatever i have shown you here the sex uh, sex hormones like testosterone estrogen progesterone aldosterone cortisol all these are the hormones which are derived from cholesterol now cholesterol we know it's it's like a fat thing right so just tell me where is the location of har uh, where is the location of receptor for this hormone just think and say now all these hormones whatever i have shown you here testosterone estrogen progesterone aldosterone cortisol they are all derived from cholesterol so can they cross the lipid bilayer can they cross the cell membrane absolutely yes so take a note these hormones these hormones means the cholesterol derivatives these hormones can cross the cell membrane okay so the receptor is present in the cell or inside the cell okay this is a very important point which you need to know for your entire life okay this is the basic thing now let's discuss about the fourth class of hormones which are called as vitamins okay even certain vitamins can act as hormones what are they vitamin a and d vitamin a and d are also categorized as hormones now important point is now this vitamin a and d they are which type of vitamins are they water soluble vitamins or fat soluble vitamins there is no doubt vitamin a d e k they are fat soluble vitamins fat soluble vitamins now as they are fat soluble now these vitamins can they cross the cell membrane or not yes these vitamins can cross cell membrane okay they can cross the cell membrane and they can show their effects inside the cell so vitamin a and d they have receptors where receptors are present receptors are 
present intracellularly okay intracellular receptors are present now with this we have discussed the four important classes of hormones again i'm just recapping them the first group of hormones are single amino acid derivatives the second group of hormones are made uh, derived from the proteins insulin and parathyroid hormone the third group of hormones are cholesterol derivatives or we can also say them as steroid hormones which crosses the cell membrane and the fourth group of hormones are vitamins vitamin a and vitamin d are considered as the hormones and they are fat soluble vitamins so they can also cross the cell membrane and their receptors are also present inside the cell okay guys in the next video let's discuss about different types of receptors